Decisions happen in real life and in programming. And I have an example of a decision here inside of this slide, which is going to say, if I win a million dollars, I'm going to go to Disney World. It's a conditional statement because it's only going to be enacted if the top line is true. If it's false, I'm just going to continue on my life as if nothing happened. And to show you this, I'm going to diagram it out in a flowchart. And you can see in the diamond shape, I have what is going to be my conditional. And if that conditional is true, I'm going to do the conditional code. Otherwise, I'm going to follow the other arrow, which leads around it, and is not going to use that conditional code on that particular run. And so you can imagine this yellow dot being me walking through this scenario. Let's say that I put my name in for a drawing, and I didn't win the million dollars. Well, where would it go? It would go around and ignore my desire to go to Disney World as if it never even happened. Let's say a second scenario where I did win the million dollars, I would go and follow the true arrow and I would go to Disney World, then I would continue on with my life. Now let me give you another example of a conditional. And that is, if a student gets 100 on a test or an exam or something like that, they're going to receive a piece of candy. So I've written out the flowchart and what it would look like, but instead of just talking you through the program, I want to show you what it would look like in code. So this program right now is just going to have someone hard code in a grade, which I've hard coded in 100, and then print out your grade. So no matter who you are, you're going to get your grade back from this program. But I want to add a conditional. So when I get to this point in the program, I'm going to add an if statement. And an if statement is going to start with the word if and have parentheses following the if statement. And what's going to go inside of that if statement is a conditional. I have to ask myself, well, what am I comparing? I'm going to be comparing the grade that I made to the preset value of 100. And what can I put in between the two of them? Well, I have six options. And those options are relational operators. I can say grade is less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, equal to, or not equal to 100. Well, in this case, I want to say if someone made 100 on the exam, they're going to get a piece of candy. So I'd use the double equal sign. Now that I have my if statement written, I want to say what happens if that's true? Well, it's going to say you get a piece of candy. And in this case, because the person did make 100 on their exam, they would get a piece of candy. And then just like everyone else, it would print out their grade saying it is a 100. Now, let's say that a person made a 25 on the test. Would they get a piece of candy? Well, no, it would come to the conditional, find out that it's false, and it would ignore the code within the if statement and go on to say, your grade is a 25. It doesn't mention anything about candy, it just ignores that statement. Now let's say that I not only want to give someone a piece of candy for getting 100 on the test or exam, I also want to tell them that they are awesome. So I'm going to add that to the code, and it's going to change my flowchart slightly. It's going to say, you get a piece of candy, and you are awesome if you make a 100. So if we walk through this program right now, I would get to the conditional, find out that it's true, and then the program would output, you get a piece of candy, and you are awesome. Then it would go on with the program and do what it always does and print out your grade is a 100. But we're going to find that there's an issue with this. What happens if I make a 25? It's going to check whether my grade is 100. And then it should walk around the other code. But as you're going to see, it's going to say, you are awesome. Your grade is a 25. Well, we don't want it to do that. If you're making a 25 on a test out of 100, you're probably not doing your best. And that you are awesome should not be printed out. So instead of the code looking like what it does on the right, it's actually doing something like this. And we're led into the false belief that you are awesome is part of the if statement. Well, why did we believe that? Well, it's because of the indention here. And although it looks like it would be part of the if statement, indention does not mean anything to the compiler. It's simply for readability for the programmer. 
So we're going to have to do something to put these statements together or say these two system out print lines are part of the if statement. And the way we do that is we add them into a block using braces. And so now the braces are going to make it so those two lines of code, you get a piece of candy and you are awesome, are only going to run if the grade is 100. So we get the flow chart like we originally intended. And so if my grade was a 25, it would be false and it would correctly print out your grade is a 25. So what can we learn from this? If there is more than one line of code underneath an if statement or that you want to be part of an if statement, you must put braces around it. Otherwise, it will only run one line of code beneath it. Next, what I really want to do is show you some common mistakes with if statements. And probably one of the most common mistakes is on the screen right now. Hopefully you can pick it out. And that is the semicolon at the end of the if statement. If you put a semicolon there, it's going to end the if statement before it ever begins. So if I ran this code, even though I made a 25 on my grade, it would still say, you get a piece of candy, you're awesome, your grade is a 25. Never, ever, ever, ever put a semicolon before an open brace. It's going to end the statement before it even happens. So in this case, for all intents and purposes, the if statement doesn't even exist. So no matter what number you put in, everyone would get a piece of candy. It would be said about everyone that they are awesome and it would give them their grade, which is not the intention of the program. On this one, here is another common mistake with if statements, and hopefully you can pick it out. And that is, we're using the assignment operator, not the relational operator. The relational operator has two equal signs. And if you do this, you're going to get an error because it thinks that you're trying to assign 100 to grade. And that just can't happen inside of this if statement. So be very careful when you're writing if statements to use the correct equality operator. And if you're going for equality, make sure you use the double equal sign. And as I said, this program would produce an error. Now lastly, what happens if you didn't make 100, you did above and beyond and made 104? Would you get a piece of candy? Would you be awesome? Well, not according to the program. It would just say your grade is 104. Think about it for a sec and think about how we would correct this program. You probably guessed it, we would change the relational operator that we're using. So if we wanted to say someone made extra credit and they made above 100, we could just say greater than or equal to 100, and that would change the program to where now it would allow anyone who made 100 or greater to get a piece of candy and to be told that they are awesome. And that's exactly what the program does. An if statement will always have a conditional statement inside of it, and that conditional statement will either evaluate to true or false. If the statement is true, it will run the code beneath it. Otherwise, it will circumvent the code and continue on as if that code doesn't exist. If you have just one line of code with an if statement, braces are not required. But if you have more than one line of code, braces are required. Some people use braces around everything, whether it's one line or more lines, just for the sake of readability. And this is probably good programming practice. But I want you to be aware that if you do not see those braces there, it means that only one line of code is going to be run. And lastly, beware of the common mistakes. Don't put a semicolon before the open brace of an if statement. And make sure you're using the relational equality operator, not the assignment operator. As I started with, decisions are common in both programs and real life. The if statement is a powerful tool that's going to allow us to make decisions within the code. Used properly, they'll open a lot of new options for how programs are run. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click on the like below. If you like videos like this, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.